One of the most annoying things about being in the online political space is dealing with all the communists, all the socialists, all the Marxists that are online and that pretend that they don't back one of the most authoritarian ideologies to ever exist. You know these people who embrace all this Marxian theory, who talk about how we need to redistribute everything, but then when you call them what they actually are, they say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, I'm not in favor of Venezuelan-style socialism, even though I'm on record when Venezuela appeared to be working as supporting their system. I'm in favor of the Scandinavian model, social democrat, not, not really democratic socialists, even though I call myself that and I promote these ideologies all the time on my channels and on the internet. I'm in favor of the Scandinavian system. I want more billionaires per capita than the United States of America. I want a less regulated economy than in the United States of America. I just want higher taxes on the middle class, and a larger welfare state. I'm so sick of hearing this nonsense, and it's such an obvious, embarrassing lie that you need to look no further than these people's YouTube channels to see that they're lying. And one of the most obvious examples of these people actually being socialists, actually being Marxists, actually being communists that embrace this authoritarian ideology is their full embrace of this fringe figure named Richard Wolff. Go to almost any one of these lefty channels, these lefty channels that say for sure they just want the Scandinavian model. They're actually social democrats, not democratic socialists, and punch in the name Richard Wolff and see the overwhelmingly positive coverage that appears on their channel. One of the oldest videos that I found on Secular Talk's channel, you know, the guy who says, Bernie's actually the center, he's like an FDR social democrat, he's not a democratic socialist, was interviewing this guy seven years ago, despite the fact that he is a fringe socialist figure that is often propped up in order to push this authoritarian ideology. Go to the Rational National, you'll find interviews glorifying Richard Wolff. Sam Cedar Show, The Majority Report, you'll find Richard Wolf All across these platforms, you'll find people embracing this fringe figure who is an absolute buffoon and shouldn't even call himself an economist. I mean, he calls himself a Marxist economist, which is an oxymoron because Marxists don't understand anything about economics, which I'm going to show you later. But the point is, is that all these figures that swear up and down that they're not in favor of socialists are backing a socialist economist and citing him as if... He is an incredibly wise source on the issues of our time. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. They throw it in your face and then lie to you about it. And I'm not going to take it anymore. So I'm going to go straight to the source and take down one of these clips that these people absolutely love about Richard Wolff, which they think shows that he really knows what's going on in capitalism, when in reality, it just shows what a total buffoon this man is and why he should not be called in any way, shape, or form an economist. You know that... In the private sector, which is where most of us work, the overwhelming majority, the employer produces some good or some service and sells it into the market. And that employer is never ever going to hire you for $20 an hour unless the following sentence is true. During each hour that you work, you add more to the value of what your employer sells than the $20 he's going to pay you. Or to say it in real simple English, you produce more than you get paid. So if you've said to yourself, if you heard some proud person say, I will never work for anyone who doesn't pay me what I'm worth, you're talking to a person who doesn't understand how the system works. You were never paid what you were worth, and you cannot and will not be in a capitalist system. Why? Because the difference between what your labor adds to the value that your employer sells and what he pays you is his profit, and it's why he's in business. So for some odd reason, this is considered a profound realization on the left. The Rational National actually did an entire video where he praises this specific speech of Richard Wolff, and he uses the clip that I just showed you, because this really lets you know the secret of capitalism. Except, this isn't a secret at all. This is how all transactions work in the marketplace. When you buy something, absolutely anything, when you buy it, you are acknowledging that the product that you are paying for or the service that you're paying for 
is worth more to you than the money you are giving up for that product or service. Take the laptop that I've been using to edit my videos for almost about three years. Now the reason I bought this laptop at the steep price of $1,200 is because it could do everything that I needed to do in order to produce the work that you see here on this channel. Now, I actually made way more money off of this laptop and all of the equipment that you see around me than I actually put in in terms of real dollar amounts to that equipment because, again, the equipment was worth more to me than the money I gave up for it. Now, according to Richard Wolf, if I applied the same standards that he's applying in terms of labor, which, again, is traded in the market like any other commodity, to what I did buying this laptop from Apple or this camera from Canon or this Yeti microphone or the lights that are around me, I should be paying them more money because the difference is my profit and you can't profit off of anything because that's terrible and sinister and exploitative. You see the flaw in this theory? You see why this doesn't make any sense at all? And obviously, if I'm going to hire somebody to do work for me, the work for them is going to be more valuable to me than the money that I pay them. Otherwise, why would I even bother to hire them? On top of that, if I'm somebody who's been taking a job, which I have taken jobs in the past, the reason I take that job is because the money that they're paying me is more valuable than my time at the time to do that job. So I could do nothing, make no money whatsoever, have a labor value of zero, or I could work for somebody who offers me something that I'm able to engage with in order to make money for myself and make money for the employer. This is a principle, like a basic principle of trade. The idea that you trade value for value. This is why trade is win-win. But Richard Wolff, the so-called economist, doesn't understand this principle. But don't worry, because even though he doesn't understand this principle, Richard Wolf has a sinister tone in his voice that makes you feel really shook and scared. And if you don't generate that profit for him, he's got no use for you. He's got no use for you. You see how sinister it sounds when you use that voice rather than talk about it in a rational, logical way, in a way that an actual economist would discuss these topics? Obviously, you're not going to pay an employee more than they produce for you because you could just keep the money and you would be better off. The whole point of trade, the whole point of transacting is that you become better off from the transaction. However, there is a giant asterisk, I don't know if you noticed it on screen, in what we're talking about because there are instances where you do pay employees more than they produce for you and this is when you're basing their pay scale on the expectation of future profits. Something that Richard Wolf, weirdly, the economist, is not interested in whatsoever. Think about it, if you are researching and developing a product that you expect to bring to market something like 10 to 15 years out in the future, you have to pay the employees during the time that you're researching and developing that product. Now, if 10 to 15 years in the future, when you bring this product to market, it turns out to not be profitable. As an employer, what do you do? Do you get to claw back the money that you paid in wages to people who actually didn't produce any profit for you that actually ended up ultimately producing losses for you? No. Does Richard Wolf advocate for you to be able to call that back? Because, you know, it's unfair for the employer to profit off the employee. So shouldn't it be fair to give back the money if the employer took a loss on the employee? No, he doesn't talk about that. These people are only interested in companies that are already successful. They're not interested in building anything. They're not interested in the hard road that it actually takes to get to the point where you're successful. What they do is they come by after it's already established, after everything's successful and decide that they are entitled to the fruits of other people's labor, that they are entitled to benefit from what other people invested in, what other people produced for. And on top of the entitlement, the selfishness, the greed that is a trademark of any socialist ideology, they then go around and tell the employer when they're successful that all the money that they put into their business when they weren't making money, all the people that they paid to do work for them when they weren't actually turning a profit, retroactively, those people were exploited because in the future, that product ended up actually making money. Again, when it doesn't work out, when the employer is at a loss, they don't say that the employees need to give back the money to the employer because again, at that point, labor's a cost like any other cost. But all 
all of a sudden, when you get into when you're actually making profit, then there's the labor theory of value, and they're just stealing that surplus labor, that surplus profit from the employee. So for the American people, the vast majority of whom come home every day with a vague sense of having been ripped off at the job, they're exactly right. It's just they haven't had the course yet to be able to understand why they feel that way and why they ought to. If you have the vague sense or any sense that you are being ripped off by your employer, then do us all a favor, shut the hell up and go find another job. On top of that, if you don't want to find another job because you'll just be exploited by another employer because you don't understand the principles of trade and how it's mutually beneficial, then start your own business. And if you say, oh wait, I can't start my own business, then I guess the employer was providing you with something that you didn't have on your own in order to produce that value and is entitled to profit off of what they're providing you with your labor. Now again, the problem isn't just Richard Wolf, this fringe buffoonish figure that pushes authoritarian ideas ideology. It's the people that support him and promote him and pretend like he isn't this fringe figure. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe these people aren't actually doing that. Maybe the Rational National is setting up this video so he can criticize how ridiculous and absurd it is. Let's hear his take on this video. All right. <laughs> so I have two more clips to get to. But look, if this is your introduction to uh, Richard Wolf, follow him on Twitter, follow him on, on YouTube, look up his speeches. The guy's brilliant. Yeah, of course not. Of course, the Rational National is going to endorse and buy into this fringe economic figure. And then he's going to defend Marxism as a philosophy and say that he doesn't understand why Marxists are viewed as such scary people. I mean, you don't have to be a, a socialist or a Marxian economist to understand the inherent flaws in capitalism. It's okay to critique the system. I mean, people are so... It's hilarious like how... Marxists have such have become such a, a scary word or, or scary people. All Marxism is are is a critique of capitalism. That's all it is. I don't understand why Marxists are such scary people to some people. I mean, just because every country that has been founded or started or there was a revolution based on their values has been an authoritarian hellscape that violates human rights as a necessity in order to institute any kind of socialism or communism, and that has led to the deaths of tens of millions of people directly murdered by the state, I don't understand why people are so upset by that. I don't understand why people find Find these people so scary they're just criticizing capitalism they're just advocating for the destruction of your property rights which are your basic human rights to provide for yourself they're just trying to make you dependent on them so that they're in complete and utter control of your life and they intend on cracking down on all of your other human rights in addition to your property rights because all of those rights hinge on the fact that you're able to own your own property and provide for yourself i, I don't understand why people are so upset by that it's just a critique of capitalism it's critiquing the inherent flaw of capitalism by ignoring the basics of trading and how it's mutually beneficial. I know Richard Wolf, such a genius. Go follow him on Twitter. Rational National totally endorses him. Kyle Kalinske also endorses him. All these people love Richard Wolf. He's so he's so smart. He's just he's just a Marxist. He just pushes authoritarian ideology. But so smart, so smart, so amazing, so stunning, so fing brave. There's only one real issue, in my opinion for the American people. They finally got to stop pointing fingers somewhere else and figure out that allowing an economic system to exist that behaves this way, that puts as its leader a person whose lack of appropriateness for the job is so grotesquely on display every day, the whole world kind of shakes its head in stunned disbelief. You're supposed to have a veneer. That's why you have Ivy League schools. You learn how to not show that sort of thing. <laughs> the system requires it, but you have to disguise it. The system is an extremist, and so it can't, it actually needs clowns, theater performers, to distract people. Let's get angry at Mr. Trump. What, do you, what for? When he's gone, there's 20 more like that. There's no shortage. 
England is about to put into office their Mr. Trump. So finally, we have this weird, incredibly spurgy, ridiculous thing. And remember, this was dated way back in like 2019, the clip that Richard Wolff is actually talking in, where he says, proof that capitalism is falling apart, more or less, is that Trump was elected president. Proof that capitalism is falling apart is that Boris Johnson, the British Mr. Trump, is about to become the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Even though these are governing systems, they're democratic systems, the United States is a republic, a little bit different, but Boris Johnson was elected democratically in the British system, and these guys talk about how we all need to democratize things, because if we just had democracy in the workforce, if we just had people with no stake in the game actually voting on what to do with it because they happen to take a job at the company, therefore, we would have a better system, but then we criticize people for voting the wrong way, and if you believe that people often vote the wrong way, then maybe you shouldn't leave somebody else's human rights, the employer, their right to property, up to the subject of a vote of a mob that's not really invested or knowledgeable about the situation. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is a little contradiction in the genius Richard Wolff's ideology right here. Maybe he just vomited this up without really thinking about it. But then again, he's a Marxist economist. He's full of contradictions and he doesn't really think about anything because again, he is a buffoon. And all the people that support him, all the people who say they're just for Denmark, they're just social Democrats that back a Marxist economist, not an economist backing the Scandinavian model of less market regulations, higher on the economic freedom index, no minimum wage, more billionaires per capita, but a Marxist economist, then maybe we understand exactly where these people are coming from. Look, we have to be honest about the people that we're talking about, even when they're not being honest about themselves. We have to call out these people who embrace all the ideas of Marxism, socialism, communism, these authoritarians who pretend they're just about the Scandinavian model. These people who support all these socialist countries countries when they appear like they're going well and then abandon them or say actually Venezuela's failed because of a capitalism somehow some insane reason why when Venezuela was a democratic socialist state that's why they failed that's why Venezuela sucks because of socialism so in conclusion Richard Wolf is an utter buffoon he doesn't understand the principle of trade and thus he should not call himself an economist and the fact that he is being promoted by all of these lefties, even though he is this fringe Marxist figure, proves what they actually believe. It is them taking the mask off and showing you that they are, in fact, authoritarian socialists. And what's the difference between an authoritarian socialist and a democratic socialist? Nothing. It's all authoritarianism. Socialism, by its very nature, involves authoritarianism. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like the video, then please show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social medias. They are linked in the description. Support me via the support links. I know I don't get as much money on Patreon and Subscribestar as these socialists that are just trying to redistribute wealth while they're profiting off of selling you socialism, but it would be nice to get a little bit more. I know it's a pandemic, so don't feel obligated. Till next time.